thanks everyone for joining me today in this webinar for CICD and modern cloud data warehouses. Um, let's just, I'm just trying to move all these windows out the way. Um, so, so I think the main thing I want to do today is uh, get everyone across how to maximize uh, everyone's agility while maintaining governance in their cloud data warehouses. Um, I want to help you guys maximize the value of your investment in your cloud data platform um, by speeding up your data analytics development cycle to match the velocity uh, that your business is traveling at. Uh, let me just jump into a bit about Altus first. Um, so, you know, Altus has been around for over 20 years. You know, we have offices across Australia, New Zealand, uh, and the UK, and we're vendor independent, um, meaning we don't actually sell software uh, and we have no vested interest to push um, any particular software at all. And really what this allows us to do is to focus on delivering the best outcomes for our clients. So here are some of our software partners. We've implemented these across all of our customers. And again, we don't particularly try to push any product, but rather the best solution for our clients. Um, now we operate actually in a number of spaces in the data and analytics uh, industry. So this is a quick graphic of our services in some of the air other areas that we offer. Um, so we, you know, sort of range from building a data warehouse from the ground up through to predictive and prescriptive analytics. And we support all these activities from the strategic advisory, you know, the delivery, as well as the uh, managed services and supporting that um, all the way after implementation. Um, so we're really happy that Gartner has recognized Altus as one of their leading data and analytics service providers for the second year in a row. Um, as our CEO, John, has said, um, you know, we're really glad that the business outcomes that we deliver continue to shine through uh, for all of our clients, as you can see on the screen there. Quick dive into our sort of uh, industries that we operate across. So we obviously, as you can see on screen, uh, we have clients across a number of industries um, and we have a large variety of problems that we cover across our desk. Um, so you know, from utilities through to higher ed, health, logistics, um, and in both public and private sector. So despite the large range of industries that we work across, there have been some consistent trends emerging in the data and analytics space for a while now. So let me just jump into some of these. Um, so first, the sheer magnitude of the data um, companies are using in order to understand and drive their business in all aspects and levels throughout a company is growing um, and at an increasing pace. And so this is only going to continue as more companies continue along their digital transformation journeys. Secondly, the variety of data that they're leveraging is much more than it was previously. You know, businesses are able to, to gain much more insight by blending in syndicated and public data sets uh, with their own data. And on top of that, much more of our clients are getting insights from things like unstructured and semi-structured data sets than ever before, you know, from activities like text mining uh, to enterprise search. So lastly, the speed at which businesses require answers to new questions they haven't asked is now higher than ever before, even more so due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So businesses need to know at a glance really what their position is and risk is across operations uh, and initiatives that are in flight. So as a result of the three things I just mentioned, ultimately when it's all said and done, um, data teams often struggle to execute at the speed at which executives and leaders throughout businesses are thinking. Now, how can we bridge this gap and provide data teams with a force multiplier to speed up their delivery cycles? So data teams often have a lot of manual processes that haven't been automated. And there are a number of processes and quality checks that happen between you know, the raw data being ingested into a database, uh, developing various uh, views that represent that data for a particular reporting purpose, 
um, and it being presented to the end user. So this leads to teams losing trust from stakeholders as they can't trust their own data as a result of rushing development. And because of that, delivery timelines are backed up due to subsequent testing and retesting uh, and a self-perpetuating cycle can build from there. Now, this is where CICD comes in. So what is CICD? So CICD stands for continuous integration and continuous deployment. And really it's just a set of practices aimed at delivering developments with speed, safety, and reliability. In effect, it's just infrastructure around your data team that tests things like business rules, data quality, uh, and data freshness um, automatically in the background. So this all happens each time a feature is either being developed, uh, tested, or released to production. And so this is key as it frees up capacity for doing new development while maintaining strict standards that were set in place previously or new ones as they arise. So what are the benefits of some of these? You know, um, I think the biggest thing we want to take away from today is that, you know, if, if we implement CICD or when it comes to implementing CICD, you end up with an increased governance and change control. So any and all changes within a CICD framework uh, attract, enabling a greater degree of control over the change process. Uh, you end up with increased maintainability. So this results in low overheads over time for your data team, uh, due to all changes going through that change control process that I mentioned. Uh, you end up with a faster time to value, that is uh, the time it takes for a question to be asked, uh, and the feature to actually land in the hands of the customer. You have a high quality of output because built into the process is a series of code and data checks to ensure alignment with business rules and data governance policies. Uh, you end up with higher customer satisfaction because you're enabling a faster turnaround of new features and bug fixes. Ultimately, you're better positioned to meet your customers' evolving expectations as they use your product. Uh, finally, you end up with a higher trust and reliability of your own data. So as data teams speed up, um, without the necessary infrastructure to maintain a high quality of output, in consumers, you know, particularly executives, tend to start distrusting reports published by data teams. And so CICD practices are key here to maintaining high performance capabilities in delivering business outcomes, as well as a starting point for teams looking to mature into things like DevOps and data ops. So research coming out of Google on the state of DevOps show that teams with high performing CICD practices are you know, deploying code more often, uh, releasing uh, features faster, recovering from incidents faster, and have a decreased failure rate from changes implemented. As you can see on the screen here, you know, some of these numbers are quite, quite ridiculous and quite uh, substantial in terms of ROI uh, when it comes to the bottom line. So how do we achieve this? So this is where I want to introduce our Alta CI/CD framework. So we actually have a number of frameworks that allow us to kickstart capabilities for our customers. Um, the particular one I'll be showing today will be aimed more at CI CD with the newer cloud data warehouses uh, like Snowflake, uh, Redshift, Azure Data Warehouse, and BigQuery. Um, so this framework in particular on screen is composed of a couple key technologies, DBT and GitLab. So and it lets you do a number of things as you can see on screen. Um, so it lets you do uh, sorry, it lets you automatically check your code base, lets you execute that code base against a database, and then subsequently test the logic and underlying data outputs at any points in that pipeline. And finally, it provides automated data lineage as well as documentation so that anyone working on the database can understand at a glance what they're working with. So all of what I just mentioned is also versioned and released through a change control process to ensure that everything is tracked, 
so that if anything breaks, we can identify where and when it broke to quickly address the underlying issue. So again, this is a framework and as such a general starting point. So the actual order, actions, um, and deployment behavior can, can be customized on a case by case basis. So we're actually able to deep dive into each, um, uh, each one of those processes that, that you just saw. Um, so each tick represents a process or an action. Um, and so you can take a peek under the hood of each one of those in isolation. And again, this allows us to deep dive and identify where our implemented changes may have issues. And with zero intervention, we can stop uh, those subsequent actions from happening if those prior steps have failed. So what does this mean for a scaling data team? So the impact this has means that you can add more team members um, and the automated checks and logic that you put in place give you peace of mind when lots of people are working on lots of different things. So in other words, CICD becomes a force multiplier when scaling up development efforts across your organization. So another benefit of implementing CICD on cloud data warehouses is the automated data lineage that can be generated. So this is key when you have uh, constant data efforts running across the organization. You know, as your cloud data warehouse gets increasingly complicated, you know, as it serves more and more departments and end users, the need for central for a central location for documentation it you know, becomes becomes higher and ultimately becomes paramount because this really helps, for example, uh, embedded analysts within product or department teams that only have expertise across specific areas of the business and it really helps them hit the ground running. So while the data lineage is automatically generated as a byproduct of the development process, data dictionaries still need to be defined by subject matter experts. So this is accessible in the same place as the data lineage view, centralizing documentation relevant to the cloud data warehouse for all data team members. Uh, ultimately it allows for um, the definitions and the logic to be tied to each other. While it's all versioned, uh, built, deployed, and released while going through that strict change control process. Um, so for all those on the call today, we actually have an offer now for a free workshop to do a readiness assessment uh, for implementing CICD, whether that's around the framework I presented today, um, our AWS or Azure framework, and depending on your internal team, we can help you implement it. Uh, so thanks for joining us today. I hope you found it informative. I know this was short and sweet, um, but does anyone have any questions before we wrap this up? Um, so the question was, uh, what are all the minimum tool sets required for CI CD orchestration within Snowflake? Um, so the tool set I just presented today was purely around the GitLab DBT uh, tech stack. It doesn't actually do any orchestration. So DBT on, what do you call it? DBT cloud will actually do the orchestration for you as well. There is that um, pathway for a strict, uh, yes, minimal uh, product um, integration. So you don't have to you know, integrate something like Airflow on top of it and then worry about that. DBT Cloud will do that as well. You can also just orchestrate with, um, with Airflow for that. Um, again, Deepak, I'm not sure what you're asking if it's with regards to the actual uh, logic of the ETL, sorry, the ELT paradigm of all the tables inside Snowflake, or if you're talking about the orchestration of the ETL effort into Snowflake. Uh, but for everything within the actual Cloud Data Warehouse itself, um, DBT Cloud or Airflow will, will orchestrate that just, fly, uh, just fine with uh, DBT. So I've got another question from Guillaume. So does the data need to be in a database before using DBT or can we use other repositories such as S3? So yeah, DBT uses 
um, actually an ELT paradigm. So everything ideally should be staged before um, you actually, uh, I guess, start executing on it. So you can land everything in a stage or a raw table in Snowflake or your cloud data warehouse, um, and then go from there. You can actually do what's called a seed. There is a seed function in, um, in DBT, which is more aimed at loading ad hoc data analyses. So let's say someone from finance comes up to you and just suddenly says, we have this spreadsheet that we want you to upload to our data warehouse uh, for whatever reason, um, that is also available, but it's not designed to be the most scalable, um, I guess, function. It's just supposed to be there as a quick ad hoc analysis tool to supplement um, you know, something like Snowpipe um, and all the actual uh, more enterprise scale ELT activities. Cool. Uh, does anyone have any other questions? All right. It doesn't look like there are any other questions. Uh, I might just call it there. Thanks everyone again for attending. Hope you found it informative. Again, please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any other questions on CICD. All right. Thanks for joining you guys.